beautiful child uh, born out of IVF. Uh, and though while I'm an organic farmer, I think the only genetically modified crop I have is my own baby. She fell, she fought, and in the end, she emerged victorious. This is the woman of today, and she is made of steel. Come and watch how she slays. I'm Kavita. I will start with talking about my childhood, which I think I was very blessed with because uh, I was uh, born as a single child to my parents and I was a sole attention, I was a sole center of their attention. Uh, but having said that, while I was an, a very indulgent, it was a very indulgent childhood, but was yet also a very disciplined one because my parents ensured that while I was given all the freedom to do that I wanted to do, their main uh, uh, lesson or teaching to me was that do what you wish to do, but do not be hesitant about telling us what you are doing. Basically, it was all about having the freedom, but enjoying that freedom uh, with responsibility. I was fortunate to have, uh, uh, well, at that time I did not really, I really despised my mother for being extremely competitive. And she, I think, her, she was a homemaker. And her main uh, ambition, I think, in her life was me. And what she really wanted me to become was financially independent. I feel uh, striking a balance is never really a challenge if you really enjoy what you're doing and work becomes holiday and holidays become work. So I have always tried to combine things that have interested me with uh, my work. For example, if I had to travel a lot, I always combine that with, you know, exploring the city that I went to, you know, visiting the temples, the mosques, the, you know, eat, meeting local people, trying out the local food, getting more familiar with the local culture. So it was a combination of work and pleasure and almost like a paid, paid holiday for me, you know. And every time you work and if you really have your heart at it, it never really should feel that you're missing out on anything or you're making a compromise on something that you would have much rather done but being at work where you are. So it is always very important to pull the plug at the right time and say, this is it. Um, in my 20s, I learned through various jobs what I had to. In my 30s, I made my money. In my 40s, I learned how to manage that money. And now that I'm nearing 50, I'm slowly gearing up to that stage where I want to enjoy what I have worked for. So it is very important to really know when to say no and when, you know, this is it. I always tell people that it's great to be in a man's world so long as you get to be a woman in it. Uh, you know, there are uh, a lot of advantages of being a woman and I think a lot of times women get lost in that whole struggle to become one of the boys. Uh, I don't think you need to be one of the boys. You just need to be the woman amongst all those boys is what I believe in. I was uh, fortunate to have worked for uh, a fabulous company like PepsiCo, you know, where uh, judgments and performances are not made, uh, measured on the basis of sex or looks or gender. Uh, they are totally performance related and there is really no genetic bias, uh, gender bias in those organizations. When I had, when I decided to go through my IVF, I was 44 and I think the biggest trigger at that time was that I had finally met a man who I believe deserved to be a father of my child. It is very important to earn my respect, uh, you know, be it my husband or my boss. And uh, I think this that I met this man who I felt could make an excellent father, could, uh, you know, inculcate the same value systems that I wanted my child to grow up with, could provide me and my child the security that we both may require eventually. I think uh, there is no prescribed ideal age to really have a baby, uh, whether you have it through an IVF or a regular pregnancy. It is the age where you believe that you are not going to be making a big trade-off with your life, an age where you believe that you are not going to feel bad about having not be able to do things that you aspire to do. And at a time when you are really prepared to take on this new role, because it does come with a lot of responsibilities and a lot of uh, uh, commitment. The only apprehension I had was 
possibly the fact that at, you know as you get older your body uh, does degenerate in, at some at some level and I think the biggest fear that women have when they are trying to become mothers at an older age is will the baby be fine will there be will the baby have any issues uh, but then you know uh, as, as I said science has progressed so much there are ways to screen out issues before a baby is brought into this world there are ways to fix the issues once the baby is brought into this world. I have a beautiful child uh, born out of IVF. Uh, and though I am an organic farmer, I think the only genetically modified crop I have is my own baby. And she is a lovely child. I think she's almost like a flower child. She's blessed and very fortunate to be growing in an environment where she's surrounded by animals. And we get to do a lot of things outdoors. Uh, we spend a lot of time together because there is very little else to do, you know, having, living in a farm and isolated from a lot of people. Uh, our day typically is all about, you know, either bathing the dogs or bathing the cows or feeding our goats. And uh, our favorite pastime is making cow dung cakes. Uh, she is also uh, very fond of cooking because, uh, uh, you know, that's another thing that I really started, you know, developing after I quit my job. I started getting into the kitchen a lot much more and experimenting with food. And I think the whole trick is about not adapting yourself around the child. It's about getting the child to adapt to your lifestyle. And that's when things become a lot more fun, a lot more easy. But leaving a job is never easy, especially if it's a job which keeps you totally interacted with the external world, which, as a, which ends with a pay, fat paycheck at the end of every month. But uh, it also depends on what you call lucrative. I think the most attractive thing about a woman is her learning curve. That's the best curve she could really possess. You know, any woman who is willing to learn, any woman who is committed and passionate about evolving becomes a very attractive woman. Uh, what I would like all women to really know is that they should never stop growing, never stop learning. They should always keep themselves, put themselves first and everything else follows. Uh, they should never try to be one of the boys. They should stay the woman they are amongst all those boys because that does really mean uh, that they will make a mark. And uh, the, the thing that I really believe in that uh, the love for yourself can be your biggest strength and your dignity can be, your, can be your biggest defense. And that is the message I think every woman needs to take out from her own life.